Few teams in the NHL had as dramatic an offseason as the Ottawa Senators. Ross Levitan of Locked On Senators joins us to talk about training camp battles and how the Sens will integrate some of the new talent they have on their roster. All that and more coming up on this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. Gil Martin, so glad to be with you and thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show the co-host of Locked On Senators, Ross Levitan. And Ross, I don't know of any team that made as many big off-season moves as the Ottawa Senators training camp underway, preseason underway. How is this team integrating all of these new star players into their lineup right now? Always a pleasure to be with you, Gil. Really appreciate the intro. And we got our first taste of what could be the first line. I think they have to dethrone what was the first line last year of Josh Norris, Brady Kachuk, and Drake Batherson. But we did get our first look at Tim Stutzla with his two new line mates, Alex Dabrinkit and Claude Giroux. And the leadership was on display from Giroux. Maybe not shown on the ice as much, but in the intermission interview, he says, we have a long way to go. He was very frank. He was very blunt, just saying, going to take time chemistry this is a guy who i mean he played in the same team for what 12 years and then got a taste of florida but with three guys who've never played together you expect it to take more than a game now it's kind of funny because stutzla ended up scoring the lone goal in the one game they played uh the first half of the double header but that that's where we're at right now we just got our first taste of that top unit and then in goal cam talbot played the first half of the first game and looked solid so uh there are building blocks but Still a long way to go. Ottawa, I think, has got a little busier of a preseason than most. I've been looking around the league, and I'm based out of Winnipeg. I know the Jets play six, but Ottawa's got eight preseason games. So they'll have a little extra time here to get the ball rolling before the puck drops in Buffalo on October 13th. And probably wise that they scheduled it that way. You mentioned the goaltending. How do you envision that situation working out? Who's going to be the starter? Who's going to get most of the work? Yeah, you know what? It'll have to be dictated by performance. I know that if I'm the head coach, I'm starting Anton Forsberg on night one. I think he deserves it based on what he showed in Ottawa last year. I know Cam Talbot was an all-star, but Forsberg was arguably the Sens MVP. An 8-2-1 and one record when he faced more than 40 shots last year in front of a pretty not-so-great defense that we hope can improve here as time goes on. The addition of Jake Sanderson should help. No pressure, kid, 20 years old and being thrown into a top four role. But in goal, yeah, I'd start Forsberg game one in Buffalo. I'd start Cam Talbot. He's a Southern Ontario kid. So I know he's seen both sides of the Battle of Alberta. It's time for him to see the Battle of Ontario, the first Saturday game in Toronto. I would put them each in one and then go from there. The home opener is the third game of the year. So whoever earns it out of those first two starts, I think gets that. But It should really be dictated on play. If you told me that Cam Talbot would get 55 games, or if you told me that Anton Forsberg would get 55 games, I'd believe you either way right now. I think it's going to be really up in the air, but I would certainly say that whoever's getting the lesser of the two, injuries aside, will still probably play 30 or so games. Yeah, it's a good problem to have two goalies battling like that for playing time. Let's talk a little bit about the defense. You know, a lot of new talent up front. You have Cam Talbot joining in goal, but the the blue line is a little bit more of a question mark. Still some rumors out there that the Sens may be looking to add a player, even though training camp is already underway. What have you heard and what is the latest? Well, we're going to uh, continue to try to bring players home is what seems to be the theme. I know uh, Jacob Chikrin was born in, in South Florida while his dad played for the Panthers, but they're an Ottawa family. They they live in Armprior, which is just outside of, of the nation's capital of Canada uh, through the offseason and so on. But that to say, uh, it worked with Claude Giroux, so why not get our hopes up for Jacob Chikrin? He's got $4.6 million left in each of the next three years. So for what he's been able to bring, when healthy, that's a real good bargain for a top four bonafide top four defenseman who's been kind of toiling away, no offense, in 
Arizona with not a whole lot of room to grow when it comes to playoffs or any sort of long-term success. So I think that there's certainly interest. It almost feels like the Matthew Shane trade from an Ottawa perspective. They kind of like forced it in and they gave up a lot to get him in terms of position. We're like, okay, let's get Matthew Shane. He'll strengthen us down the middle. But then they ended up trading Kyle Turris, who it kind of just, yeah, you upgraded the position, but now you're still not as deep because you've given up a player who plays the same spot. But uh, when it comes to the rumors with Chikrin, they, they are persistent. And even Elliot Friedman addressed it yesterday on the broadcast, saying that Arizona wants Shane Pinto in, the, in any sort of package coming back the other way. And if you're a hockey fan, but not necessarily been following the Senators or the draft over the last couple of years, even if you have, maybe you think that's a deal worth taking because you have your two top centers locked up in Stutzla and, and Josh Norris, eight years and nine years, because Stutzla still has a year left before his eight-year contract kicks in. However, I'm of the side that you have to keep Shane Pinto. I think he's that special and that much um, he adds not only the depth and people are like, what, you wouldn't trade a third line center in a, in a trade for that. And I understand the sentiment, but with how Ottawa is structured and you can always move guys to the wing as well, but Pinto, he's a big right shot center, two way dominance, finished second in Hobie Baker voting to Kobe, uh, Hobie Caulfield, I almost called him Cole Caulfield won the Hobie Baker that year. And, and he had an unbelievable season, but Pinto was right there. He's an offensive weapon in the top of the face off circle on the power play. So, uh, maybe I'm partial because I bought his North Dakota college jersey, and that'd be a real shame if he doesn't even, you know, play more than 17 games where he's at now. And I just see Pinto as a guy whose value is kind of as low as it's ever going to be. He just came about off shoulder surgery. He played five games last year, right? So you really want to see him get into the groove, and I think that's why Pierre Dorian has balked so far at the trade uh, proposals that are coming his way because Arizona's not in a rush, right? They've got three years left on the contract. And even though maybe Chikrin turned up the heat with his press conference where he said, uh, you know what? The, the, the team approached me, but I accept it. And I think it's time for me to move on. So maybe not a trade demand, but certainly the two side, the two uh, sides being Chikrin and the coyotes are trying to find a fit for him to move on. I just don't know if that's in Ottawa, the left shot. Also, I know that DJ Smith comes from the school of Mike Babcock, where you have three left shot defensemen, and three right shot defensemen. And there's not a whole lot of leeway to play your offside. And Ottawa's pretty set with Shabbat and, Ch and Sanderson over the next number of years. Eric Brantz from kind of the wild card in there too. But it would be a nice addition. It would be a shiny one in a summer that's been full of shiny additions. I just don't know if in practice it's going to be as good as in theory. You talked about shiny additions. One we haven't touched on yet, Alex Debrinkit. Talk about how he's looked in camp and in preseason so far and what he's going to bring to the table. Yeah, we're still looking to see more, right? He's part of that line that, that they struggled. They, there was a lot of like, not bobbled passes per se, but guys not being in the position. And that's just getting to know each other. Like there was one play where Debrinkit brought the puck behind the net and did like a stop and he cut back to the side he came and tried to throw it out front. But instead of Stutzla anticipating that, he anticipated a full wraparound. So he had cut the other way, and it was just a giveaway kind of in the slot and a turnover. So I'm not putting a whole lot of stock into that one game. I still think if you got your fantasy hockey draft, he's a great guy to scoop up playing with the guys he is. I think Stutzla is good for a big step forward. This guy was point per game and through the last 34 games last year. So I see a lot of maturity in his game, and, and he scored a beauty in the first game against Toronto there. Uh, on Saturday night, but I, I think it's slow and steady wins the race. And that's why I'm glad Ottawa has so many preseason games. And there's two weeks left basically until, uh, until game one of the regular season, I'm sure to will be ready to go in time for that one. Ross, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Yeah, of course we're on Twitter at send central. And of course I host the uh, Tuesday locked on NHL with Mike DeStefano, and I'm going to have to bring it up to him. Gil, the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs are in postseason form. You know how you say midseason form? <laughs> Leafs are in postseason form. They were up two goals in the third period last night or Saturday night, and uh, the Sens came back and scored four unanswered to win the game. So, you know what? I'll, I'll twist the needle on on Mikey for that one. But over at uh, Locked On Senators, yeah, we got DJ Smith coming up before the regular season. We're going to have the head coach on. We had uh, Pierre Dorian a couple weeks ago. So big things happen, and we got our Locked On crossovers coming up with all the Atlantic division teams and our friends over at the locked on fantasy hockey podcast. So yeah, you can find that on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Ross, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today.
My pleasure, Gil. I'm more worried about you for Locked On Islanders and how you're <laughs> filling all this time when the team didn't do anything this offseason. It, it, it's an art form. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're great at it, and I appreciate whenever you ask me to come on your Monday show. Uh, thank you so much, Ross. Always a pleasure. Today's sponsor has a product I literally use every day. I started taking AG1 because I'm not a great pill taker and I didn't want to have to take so many pills in order to get the nutrition and vitamins that I need. So what is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adoptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. And look, it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, it contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance.